Our next speaker is Dr. Mark Sherwood. He is a former 24-year police veteran, served 10 years on SWAT teams, 12 years with the power team, a bodybuilding building champion, a former professional baseball player, a 2022 Oklahoma gubernatorial candidate, and a functional medicine expert. He will get healed. As an arts and entertainment leader, he is a podcaster, actor, and film producer. Please welcome to the stage, Dr. Mark Sherwood. Well, good morning, all. It's glad to be here today. My wife and I, Dr. Michelle, are thrilled to be here. There's nowhere else we'd rather be in the whole world than right here with you in this wonderful state of South Carolina slash North Carolina. We crossed the border. I want to take a moment to introduce my wife really quick. She is my best friend, my pal, my co-CEO, my workout buddy, and she's my best friend. Men, she's more than just my spare rib. She's my perfectly glazed, braised, smoking hot prime rib. <laughs> and it's Dr. Michelle right there. Get myself a kiss every time. We're going to talk a little bit about, in this Cliff Notes section, about arts and entertainment. It's really interesting because when we hear the terms like, let the show begin, people tend to want to build that suspense up. They're waiting to see what's going to happen. They have a great expectation. And I think expectations are great, don't you? But what if the expectations don't exactly do what we want them to do, folks? Is that makes the entertainment part dangerous. And I'll tell you something, since we've been in the movie industry and as an actor, it is challenging to stay between the lines of godliness compared to ungodliness. And how many understand there's a fine line there? We've got to stay inside of that godly line no matter what. When I think about the arts and entertainment, I had to look up and determine what it was that we're looking at. We're looking at art, painting, sculpture, literature, architecture. How many know that that's part of the arts and entertainment? We're looking at movies, we're looking at music, we're looking at radio, theater, etc. Understand that the evolution of this type of communication has went from hieroglyphics, smoke signals, now to hundred million dollar motion pictures that affect us all in the world at the same time. It actually understands that we need to know that communication is a way to get in somebody's life. It's a way to get into their person, ready to get into their spirit, their emotions. And when we talk about communication like this, the arts and entertainment industry has mastered this illustrative way to get into our lives. The entertainment industry is interesting because it has the ability to create a meaning, this meaning that actually communicates something. I think of my time back on the power team. How many remember the John Jacobs and the power team? When we would go out there and create the show business atmosphere, it got people's attention. When you got their attention, you could get their heart, and it was a powerful evangelical tool. It was amazing the way we could see lives change because you had their attention. Keep in mind, entertainment today is about getting our attention. When it gets your attention, it can also get your heart as well. When I think about the entertainment field, it can shape how we think. It can shape how we live. It can shape how we believe, and it can shape our culture. It can plant seeds of beauty, listen, or seeds of destruction. Those seeds planted into our lives and the lives of our young people will re reap a wonderful or ungodly harvest. When this imaginary world becomes possible, we understand the entertainment industry is about if you can think it, you can imagine it, you can create it. What we're seeing is the, just the epitome of mankind's worst ungodly perversion illustrated within arts and entertainment. And it's affecting our world. This $2.5 trillion industry is driving how we do life. Let me just illustrate something for you. There was a guy, a doctor, his name was Dr. Emoto. Dr. Emoto had a wonderful idea of an experiment. He took water, water, and he exposed it to music, whether opera music or rock and roll music. Interestingly enough, when he exposed that water to rock and roll music, the picture of the structure of the water became chaotic. It became disorganized. It became frantic. But oh, when he exposed it to the opera, calm music, it had these wonderful pictures that were so symmetrical. 
the water was in complete order. Folks, did you know the earth is 70% water? Did you know the human body is also 70% water? We are being affected in our very heart and world by chaos. If we think it won't affect us in the world, we need to look around and what has it done to our world when you remove God from schools, from government, from medicine, and even from church. You get what's left over. You get a perversion of the gospel. You get a conver perversion of the truth. When I think of Dr. Emoto's work, I think of what does it do to us as a human being? When we're exposed to horror movies compared to Christian movies. When we're exposed to holy pictures and images compared to unholy pictures and images. When we're exposed to wholesome talk versus unwholesome talk. When we're perpetually bombarded with fear, we could be bombarded with peace. See, it's peacefulness versus violence. And our world is going the wrong direction because we've allowed this stuff to come inside of our minds, inside of our homes, inside of our families, inside of our lives. We have to be guarded on what comes in. The entertainment industry can create behaviors. Actually, it's a science of epigenetics. Did you know that? There's something called epigenetics, which means the environment affects our genes. I'll put my medicine hat on for you. The cells have what's called effector proteins that come to the surface, and they sense either fear or peace. When they sense fear, they go inside, and they prevent the cell from working the way it's supposed to. That actually shortens lifespan, folks. But when we sense peace, it elongates lifespan. We are seeing the world today, over the last several years, reduce life expectancy. How many know that the entertainment industry has something to do with that? Media has something to do with that. What we expose our, ourselves to has everything to do with that, folks. It can affect our emotions. It can affect our spirit. And it can affect our physical bodies. We have got to guard our lives. It shaped our culture, hasn't it? Today we live in a culture where there's people that are addicted to fear. They're addicted to drama. They're addicted to chaos. They're addicted to bad news, and that's all they talk about. There's plenty of controversy around. I don't mind controversy. Sometimes I bring it about. But the bottom line is we need to be aware of what's going on in the world, but not and absolutely not consumed by it. Our words, our deeds, our actions should be focused primarily on the words, deeds, and actions of Christ. We should always focus on God during our conversation instead of focusing on the negative. We don't need to be ignorant, but we don't need to be dominated. When I think about entertainment, it's a form of communication that's created a lot of fame today. Movie stars, athletes, personalities are looked at now as experts. And they're even in elected into important positions. We've had movie stars be elected to governors. We've had entertainers be elected to president. Not saying that that's good or bad. I'm saying that that doesn't qualify you to be a leader. We've got to get rid of the whole idea of celebrityism. Celebrityism is parallel with religiosity. When we get religious, we lose relationship. Celebrityism, this popular way we do things that's driven by the media, driven by entertainment, driven by the arts, is nothing more than idol worship. We're all looking for someone other than God to ride in on a white horse and save the day. Hence, the name of the so American Idol is probably appropriate. Yes, the arts and entertainment figures that we see today don't necessarily make good leaders, do they? But yet, because of their positions, because of their influence, they are put into those positions of influence. There's a false sense of credibility given by that. Where am I going with this? We should, as people, begin to understand that our world, our world that we have as an imaginary world, not imaginary that can be calculated with the 
presumptive similarity to this world, but it's actually a world that is congruent with the kingdom. We need to begin to live out those words, live out those times, and begin to broadcast the image of Christ in our lives. And that will perpetuate into the arts and entertainment industry eventually. If we believe that we can make a difference, that's why we should and desire to write books, get involved in the media. Because ultimately, the more we get involved, the more we can make a difference. That's why my wife and I decided to get in the movie industry. That's why we started to get involved in film, because we wanted to create something that made a difference, that was going to last, that was going to be important and last the decades, it was going to give life to people, as opposed to perpetuating death. We've got to be cautious, folks, with what we allow into our psyche, what we allow into our children's psyche, what we allow into our homes, men, women, parents. It is our responsibility. That's why my wife and I, as stated, got involved. That's why I stepped out and said, I will, when called to run for governor. Folks, I remind you that winning and losing is not determined by a ballot box. It's determined already in the kingdom of heaven, and our job is to say yes to the call. Our job is to say yes to the call. By the way, I like to say my first experience in the entertainment industry was with John Jacobs and the Power Team. I had to learn how to put on a show, man. I'd be tired some days, but I had to turn it on because it was game time. Just like right now, I have to turn it on because it's game time. But as I look you in the eye, I know that as we get your attention, God's Spirit can go forth and it can change lives. You see, it's all about communication. It's all about showing something. Our priorities as people, folks, should be geared on the idea that we affect the ears, the eyes, the hearts, and the mind of everyone when we live our lives. Entertainment has figured that out. And in reality, if we think about it, all of us in this room, and in the sound of my voice, are all in the arts and entertainment industry because we live our lives in a way to show something. When we hear those words, it's showtime. When you get up in the morning, it should be showtime because I'm going to show out what my God has done for me. And I'm going to show out the good news. And I'm going to communicate messages of hope and peace and life and encouragement. The way we interact should show something. The way our lives, our lives should show something. The way we deal with our businesses should show something. The way we run our families should show something. It should show off the good news, folks. That's what I look at in my life. So how can we, or can we, own this mountain of arts and entertainment? How many think we don't need to be just a participator? We need to own the mountain. Own the mountain. There should be no other purpose. When I think about Caleb, 80-year-old dude, said, give me that mountain. I've celebrated many birthdays, getting closer to Caleb all the time. But I can still climb those mountains, and so can everyone here. We are designed to climb the mountain, stand on top of it, and not get settled there, but look for the next mountain. Folks, we need, it is critical, it's imperative to own this mountain of arts and entertainment, which we can. There's three things that I want you to do. It's important. Number one, you have to support the wholesome, godly parts of entertainment. Support it with everything you are. If something comes out, vet it carefully and then support it. That is critical. Number two, we have to understand that we are all God-inspired creators of something. If God calls you to write a book, write a book. If he calls you to start a podcast, start the podcast. If he calls you to step up and put your name out there for an audition and movie, do that. If he calls you to make a movie, do that. If he calls you to create an art form, do that. If he calls you to write something, do it. Become a master creator as inspired by God. Number three, 
We have got to be in the relationship with the creator of the masterful, magnificent beauty of the heavens and earth and the creation of mankind. See, without that, we can't own the mountain. It's all about understanding who God is. Folks, when we do those three things, we will understand clearly how we can not just come to the mountain, begin to walk up it, but own the mountain. My wife and I, Michelle, we back at the booth at the breaks back there. We have all kinds of stuff. We are functional medicine healing doctors. We have all kinds of things back there about movies, books, etc. We'd love to get to know you, and I'll be back a little bit later for the leadership section. You don't want to miss that one. So I appreciate your attention this morning. May God bless you. May he create in you a brand new spirit of hope and creativity during the course of time today. God bless you all. All right, that was amazing. I feel like doing some push-ups right now. I'm about to drop on the floor and give him 20. Listen, I want to tell you something about Dr. Sherwood. This was not planned. But Dr. Sherwood, his wife, and Jacob came here from Oklahoma. Sharana, he took the time to read my book. <laughs> How about that? But I want to tell you that he didn't ask for a dime to come here. He said, I will come here and I will serve you. So everything that he said up here was real, authentic, and genuine. And you have a mantle of leadership on your life. And I believe because of how you sow into the people on your own free will, your own choice, with expectation of nothing in return, the Lord will promote you even greater than what he has already done. So let's stretch forth your hands. I just want to pray for Dr. Sherwood. It's okay, I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder. I did tell him we were Pentecostal, so <laughs> he said, yes, give me another 20. So Father, we come before you right now, even in this moment, we ask for your blessing. We ask for your promotion. We ask for the open doors and access to places that you have already put in his heart. And I am just standing here in agreement with all of these people and say, we agree with you that these things that the Lord has revealed to you in secret, he will fulfill. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Give him a hand, Dr. Sherwood.